Surprise! Hey, Dean Meyer. <laughs> well, most universities offer a new professor a banquet. Here, it's just me. Well, uh, I... Just... Nice! No, uh, come on in. Oh, thanks. So can I get you, uh, something to drink? Ah, uh, Jonathan to the rescue. Wine. <laughs> oh, wine, great. No, but it's drinkable. <laughs> Like, have a seat. I'll open it, okay? Thanks. Good to see you. Yes. Well, you've been here two whole weeks, huh? Already <laughs> settled in. Uh, yeah. Just been so busy working on my syllabus, I haven't really had time. Oh, I'd love to read it. Well, it's in my computer. And I have to print it. My printer's, uh, in a box, yeah. Yeah, I hope you're, uh, really up for this. You know, when we announced that uh, you were coming here this fall, the psychology department was uh, jammed with uh, requests for incoming transfers. Your classes are full. Well, believe me, I think work will be the best thing for me. Can't thank you enough for bringing me on staff here. You saved my life. It's been a tough few months. So you're getting over everything then, huh? Yeah, I'm 100%. Wasn't right what they did to me back there, but you gotta move on, you know? Yeah, I know. Just remember, I'm, I'm here if you need me. Is that my graduate advisor talking or my new employer? Uh, just a, a friend. <laughs> <laughs> ah, thanks. Well. Enough about the past, huh? Of the future? Here, here. Um, speaking of the past, there's just one thing I need to talk to you about it. But I just don't know how to put this to you tactfully. Well, then don't. <laughs> okay. Uh, as a distinguished alumnus, you're kind of a celebrity around here. The university doesn't want a scandal of any kind. And we have the same policy that Antioch does, except ours is an unwritten law. There's no dating between faculty and students. And we mean it. And I sure as heck wouldn't want to be the guy to have to ask you to leave for the same reason Antioch did. Look, Jonathan, it wasn't students. It was a student. All right, and she wasn't even in any of my classes, and I wasn't that much older than her anyway. Now, Matthew, don't... No, you know, if I had met her in a bar... It would have been all right, but it wasn't. You are a teacher, and around here, we want you to act like one. That's all I'm saying. Is this the girl? No. No. People have to learn to forget, you know. It's, it's the only way to heal. Yeah, well, the people could just forget. Just forget. Just forget. Professor Jarvis? Hi, I'm Danielle Boca. Danielle Boca? I've been dying to meet you. I wanted to be the first member of the faculty board to welcome you to Bryant. Well, thank you. You know, I'm a big fan of yours. Not just of your novels, but Dean Meyer tells me you fought awfully hard to get me here, and I appreciate that. Are you kidding? Groundbreaking psychology wouldn't begin the need of a new place to continue his radical but profound work. I couldn't wait to land you here. When you get to know me better, you'll find out I'm very selfish. I love being surrounded by the best of everything, which isn't always easy to come by in a small school. Your work is brilliant. Especially that book on criminal behavior. I loved it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm flattered. <laughs> uh -huh. A crack in the armor. Wasn't it that same book that said, uh, flattery usually leads to a criminal's undoing? Yeah. It's a good thing I'm not a criminal. <laughs> no. I guess not. Um, by the way, I'm giving a lecture tonight, first in a special series. I'd love for you to be there. What's the topic? The writer and the roles she creates. Tonight we deal with character and deception. Well, that sounds great. You'll have to save me a seat in the front row. Okay. You know, maybe we could get together afterwards and talk? I'd be interested to hear what you thought. Have a little wine. I love red. 
Think about it. Okay, I will. Okay. God, I love Kellis. Beautiful day today, isn't it? It's just life. It's understanding life. It's trying to determine why we do what we do by using our own understanding of ourselves. Does that sound confusing? Good. Because that's what makes psychology fun. Sorry! Now look, I brought you all out here today because I, I want to show you the basic foundation of this entire course. Life. Look. It's everywhere. Thanks, man. It's everything. It's ever-changing. It's unpredictable. And oftentimes, it's, it's unexplainable. Now, how can you understand all this if you have your nose buried in a book all the time? You can't. You gotta be out there studying it, interacting with it. I mean, that's, that's how we understand psychology, by living it, by touching it, by breathing it, by tasting it, not by reading it, okay? So let's get started. Uh, who's first? Uh, you. Pick somebody, anybody walking by. Go ahead. Him. Okay, look closely at him. <laughs> I am, that's why I picked him. <laughs> okay, what can you tell us about him? He's cute. All right, besides the obvious. Look deeper, look closer. He's arrogant. Why? He's an SAE. <laughs> He's got a cocky grin on his face, like he thinks he's hot shit. Okay, well, maybe. But never judge a book by its cover. Look deeper. He parties a lot. Well, how do you know? Look at his backpack. It's empty. First day of classes and he's got no books? I don't think so. Okay. Interesting analysis. I think you guys are getting where I'm going with this. Uh, you, what's your name? Sheila. Sheila. Okay, uh, pick. Um... Her, in the baggy shirt. She looks like she's afraid of the world, like maybe she lives in a shell. See, again, you're going too much on surface appearance. I mean, firstly, not everybody's lucky enough to have fashion sense or the ability to pay for it. Secondly, people who live in shells desensitize themselves from reality, thus altering their own perception of reality. And they're protecting their own emotions and their feelings towards it. In other words, they block out the real world. And if you noticed, she realized very quickly that we were staring at her. I'd say she's very sensitive and probably finds enjoyment in simple things. There's nothing wrong with shyness. And besides, those of us that seem to be the most conservative on the outside are usually the wildest on the inside. And I'm sure a lot of you can back me on that one with your own personal interactions, however innocent or sordid they may be. <laughs> so let's keep it going. Uh, you, pick. How about her and that white dress? Heading to my place. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I think you guys can see where I'm going with this, so your assignment should be simple. Uh, your assignment should be simple. Just, just pick out ten people and uh, write something about them and try and find common behavioral patterns and read chapters one and two. Excuse me. 
Professor Jarvis? That was a really great class, and I was just wondering if I could ask you some questions about the assignment. talked about this. So it's, it's really just a formality. Oh, a movie expense check? Don't I wish. What is this? I, Matthew Jarvis, as faculty member, to hereby fully understand all of the response for public company student. I strongly discourage can result in forced leave until a hearing can deter... You want me to sign this? No, I don't, but the board does. Now, Dean Hess and I argued against it, but majority rules. Well, how many people are on the board? Five. We were just one vote short. Well, what about Danielle Buck? I mean, she fought to get me here. She actually voted for this? If you can keep it under your hat, she's the one who's behind the whole thing. Why'd you bring it to me? Would you want it to be somebody else? I can really think it's everybody else. Oops. Oh, God. Sorry, I thought you were in your room. I'm so embarrassed. It's not like I could do that. Besides, now we're even. At least you have sex with people. Sometimes people in your head are better than the people in your bed. Is everything okay? Oh, Corey. Oh, you. I'm hopeless. I'm worth this piece of shit. Hey, you're serious. What's wrong? It's just... Oh, never mind. Forget it. Ah, this is great. Is this about a guy? Is it? How'd you know? Oh, please. Only guys can make you feel this bad about yourself. Really? It's just I met this guy today. And, and he's incredible, and he's the first guy that ever understands what I'm all about. And I couldn't even get his attention. Sex. See, so got your attention. What are you saying? You gotta take control. Always remember that until we let it go, women are totally in control. I learned that in my sorority. Really? Oh yeah, guys act cool or tough or whatever, but what they can't turn down is sex. So if you really want something, sex is pretty much a sure way to get it. Take Mike. He's been playing it cool with me for a while. Thinks he's God's gift or something. So today I went up to him and whispered, how'd you like to fuck? You should have seen it. The whole cool thing was history, and here we are. I see what you're saying, but I don't think I could do that. Hi. Um, look, Alex, Ashley, I got to uh, I have to be somewhere at um, 4 o'clock, so uh, I have to go. Uh, you look really wonderful, you know. I'll call you later, okay? <laughs> I don't know about all this sex stuff. Maybe I could just take it slow? Absolutely. Crawl before you run. Just try some makeup. So who is this guy? Do I know him? I don't want to say anything. I could jinx it, you know. It's cool. Just go for it. He's incredible. I can't stop thinking about him. I mean, he's cute and smart and positive. He's really got it together.
have a full house. We'll start in about five minutes, okay? Yeah. Oh. You're late. I saved your seat. Brought you a little present. Oh, I appreciate this. You don't know what I've gone through with this thing. It's my resignation. Look, I want to thank you for everything you've done. But I cannot teach at an institute of higher learning whose policies are a holdover from the McCarthy era. Look, Jonathan, maybe it's me. But isn't there something diametrically wrong with that? Matthew, you're being childish. Now, you're supposed to be an expert in human behavior. Look, it's as good as of next Friday. That should give the board plenty of time to find a replacement for me. Without getting too far into the course. Now, don't be hasty. Yes, um, I think we're about ready to start. Is everything okay? Fine, fine. I'll be there in just a minute. <laughs> okay. Now, look, this isn't the time or place. I've got to introduce Danielle. Uh, come to her lecture. She's really very good. We can talk about this afterward. No! Because I don't want to hear anything that that bitch has to say. Matthew, have you been drinking? Hey, not nearly enough. Why, do I have to sign a letter for that, too? I thought you went home. No, I just stopped in to go to the bathroom, that's all. What, you're so drunk you passed out in there? No. No, come on, I'll listen to the rest of the lecture with you. Let's go. What the lecture? The lecture's over. What are you talking about? It just started an hour and a half ago. You did pass out, didn't you? No. Yes, you threw up and passed out in your own vomit. What are you hiding in there anyway? What's going on with you? Come on, level with me. Uh, I'm just a little stressed out, that's all. Now look, 
This incident is just between you and me, all right? But if anything else happens, I won't be flushing your letter of resignation. I'll be asking for it. Now, look, you've got a good thing here. You know it, and I know it. Now, don't, don't ruin it for yourself. Okay. I'll sign that letter, and I'll bring it to you tomorrow, all right? Oh, no need. I, I talked to Danielle. I told her how strongly you felt about it, and she said she's willing to drop the whole thing. Because she wanted to? Because you asked her. Well, why don't you find out for yourself? She wants to speak to you. She's probably still here. Go on, see her. Why does something tell me this could get real tense? Oh, you have good instincts. What do you say we talk over that bottle of wine? You know, the lead character in your last book always gave her men red wine before she killed them. You've read my books. <laughs> Just one, out of curiosity. Look, I'm only trying to patch things up here. Am I wasting my time? I don't know, what do you want? You want me to say that everything's okay and I'm not upset about your letter? Is that what you want to hear? You know, I don't really don't think that you care about how I feel, do you? You just want to make yourself feel better. You know, I think you're right about what you said earlier. You are selfish. <laughs> Wait, Luke, I'm sorry. No. I don't think you are. I mean, why should you be? You don't know me. You don't know anything about me, yet you're so eager to judge me just like everybody else. Guilty. I knew a professor a few years ago who dated his students. And pretty soon, that's all he dated. He knew he had complete control over them because he was their teacher, and he used that to get his rocks off. Just tossed them away without a thought, moving on to the next one. Big game for him. But you know what? He hurt a lot of feelings. It's some serious emotional damage, damage that will take years for some of them to recover from. How old were you when this happened? <laughs> I forgot. I'm talking to a psychology professor. That obvious, huh? 18. With child. Got you pregnant? Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. Okay, obviously. So... When I heard that's why you were dismissed from Montioc, you can understand how strongly I felt. That's why'd you fight so hard for me to be here? I didn't know about it then. Besides, that was business. And the letter was... Personal. <sighs> you know, there's two sides to every story. You as a writer should know that. Should have given her a chance to find out why. Fair enough. Maybe I still can. I'd like that. Vulnerability. <laughs> Damn, the cracking my armor. Nah. It's more like a plume in your helmet. <laughs> <laughs> I should really wear it more often. <laughs> I hope you like my low. Actually, red wine makes me a little nervous. I like white. It's too late. I already opened it. Your house is a little frightening. Well, it should be. It's haunted. Really? Mm-hmm. By who? A beautiful young girl. According to the legend, she died tragically. Can you believe? Mm. Of course. I know it sounds crazy, ghosts, but... It's a different story when you live with one. You can 
sense them. I saw a ghost. You saw one? Yeah, I think so. Who was it? My girlfriend. My ex-girlfriend. She drowned. I'm sorry. How? In the bathtub. She slit her wrist, slid under the water, she passed out before she could bleed to death. We just made love. When did you see her? Today. And again tonight. Where? Different places. So, she's following you? Well, she's from here, actually. Oh. So, I guess she knows her way around town then, huh? You know, I wonder if you didn't just create her, like I create characters for my books. You'd be surprised. Some of them become very real to me. I don't think so. I touched her. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking the same thing. I'm going nuts. When someone commits suicide, the real victims are often the ones who are still alive. It's not easy being that kind of victim. Says the author and the psychologist. I lost somebody once, too. I'm only telling you this because I want you to know I understand. I'm sorry about the letter. And I don't need to know your side anymore. I've learned enough about you tonight. I feel foolish, really. Don't. To new chapters? To new chapters. Cheers. Cheers. Consider what I call for lack of a better phrase. Fuck, don't fight. <laughs> okay, I see I have your attention. Uh, here's how it works. The next time you have a disagreement or an argument with that special someone, I want you to take off your clothes and become one. 
then uh, looking directly into each other's eyes, tell your side of the story. Rock back and forth. I mean, you should stimulate yourself. Your partner should do the same. Your thrust should match the passion of your conviction in the disagreement. First one to climax wins. The disagreement, I mean. <laughs> now, why? Because a disagreement probably meant more to that person. Pretty simple, huh? We're going to channel unhealthy, negative, destructive energy into positive, healthy, constructive, pleasing energy. What do you think? Is this homework or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, those of you who can, try it. But I don't want you to make it a race. I really want you to connect your sexual feelings with the argument. And if you do and you turn in a study, I'll give you extra credit. Because you'll be helping me lay down the supporting theories on my new research. But be detailed. Don't leave out any occurrence or analysis. All right, and so it's not unfair to those of you not involved in a serious relationship. You can try it out on anybody you want. As long as, and I emphasize, as long as nobody gets hurt. Those results can be very interesting indeed. All right, let's uh, open up our text and talk about what we read. Just talk about it. Just talk about it. Okay? Lock that, lock that. For those of you who have not energy, okay, what do you think? Amen to that one, sir. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys next week. Remember, fuck, don't fight, okay? Weekend's coming, so let's see if it works. Professor Jarvis? Hi, I'm Jim Harvey. I, I love your class. It, it, it makes us feel like we're all, you know, part of something. Thanks. I also write for the school paper. I'd love to do a story on your coming to Bryant and everything. Would you be interested? Uh, sure. Why don't you stop by my office between, uh, I think it's three and five. Yeah. Professor Jarvis? Yeah. I'm mad at you. Okay. <laughs> What's your name? Becky. Hansen. Okay. Becky, come on in and have a seat. No. I'm too upset. Why? Because you don't notice me. Where? See? I'm in your psych 550 class. You don't call on me. You never seem to have time to meet after class. And I have a special interest in this course. Now, Becky, you gotta understand. I have hundreds of students, and it is just the end of the first week, so you gotta give me a chance. It's a nice office. Thank you. Professor. I'm here to do what you said. What's that? Well, since I don't have a significant other, I picked you to fuck, not fight with. Oh, uh... Since I'm already mad at you. No, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Professor Jarvis? Uh, it's... Yeah, Jim! Uh, uh... Oh. Uh, no. Uh, listen, Jim, I'm just finishing up with somebody, so maybe you can just come back and say, like, five minutes? Oh, sure. Well, I'll be back in a few. Great. Thanks. <sighs> Becky, listen. You can't.
cannot be. I didn't listen. Professor Jarvis, I almost forgot. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, God. Jim, 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 wait a second. I'm sorry. Come on. Jim. I'm sorry. My roommate, Ashley, all right, she's going to use right. sex to get to you. And hey, hey, come on, on. Okay, I'll be right back. Jim! Jim! Wait, hey! Hello, Jim! Jim! Look, I know that it looked bad, but it's not what you think. It never is with you, is it, Matt? Seems to be your personal story, your life's victim. And to think I suggested that the paper do a story on you, how lucky we are to have you here. You suggested it? I thought that Jim... It was, was me, okay? I thought it would make you feel a little more at home. But I can see now you already are at home. Oh, God, Daniel, God damn it! Let go of my arm, or I'll file assault charges. Daniel, what about the other night, huh? You no. said that everything... I'm humiliated. You set me up, and I believed you. You're nothing but a liar. Now leave me alone and stop following me, okay? good when you're around. Life was so sweet. You are so sweet. I missed you. Or should I say red-assed? No, you shouldn't. Right there on his desk, right here on campus. He couldn't even wait to go somewhere. And this is only the first week of classes. God help us by midterm. Professor Boker, I have every intention of getting to the bottom of this. The bottom of this is that he's teaching this kind of behavior in class, obviously for his own benefit. The bottom of this sat on his desk yesterday with her legs spread open, while the other bottoms of this put on their sexiest panties to be next in line. Damn it, Daniel. Now that's enough. You printed this story all over the front page. It's a college newspaper, not a tabloid. There will be an investigation and a hearing. And at that time, he will be judged innocent or guilty. At that time, and not a moment before. 
I hope I've made myself clear. I assume he'll be suspended pending the hearing. Have you made any effort to get his side of the story? It is university policy to suspend faculty pending a hearing of this nature. It's policy. This is a serious incident. I hope you're not taking this so lightly that you're thinking of putting him above policy, are you? Don't tell me about policy. I know about the policy. I wrote it. Good day. Encouraging college students to have sex? In this day and age? Are you out of your mind? Yeah, I'm out of my mind, Jonathan. I am the devil himself, and I'm here at Bryant corrupting our nation's future, the innocent college youth. Well, maybe you are. All I know is people are saying a lot of damaging things about you today. Yeah, and I know what you're gonna say. That you warned me. I did? And I trusted you. That's why I'm sure there's an explanation for all of this. I know you're not this stupid. I have to suspend you until you're hearing. In the meantime, I suggest you, you get your head on straight and lay off the booze. And as your friend, I'd really like to know what happened. Professor Jarvis, words cannot describe how I feel or how badly I feel about what I've done to you. Never meant for any of this to happen. I know you'll never believe this, but I'm really a nice person. Quiet, shy. Pretty boring. My parents will never understand this. How could they when I don't even? And how could I expect you to either? I've written a letter to the newspaper explaining what really happened. I hope it makes everything okay for you. As for me, you won't be burdened with me again. Please tell the police they can find my body in the ocean. Or if you don't want to, you don't have to. It won't matter anyway. I'm sorry. I hope someday you can forgive me. Sincerely, Becky Hansen. All right, Mr. Jarvis, it's been very helpful. 
You're not planning on going anywhere, are you? Any scheduled trips? No. Good. We'll be in touch. I blame you. Look, I'm so sorry. I feel... I feel like a jackass. You're the least of my problems. Police just interrogate me like they think I threw her off myself. Uh, I got this letter. It's from Becky. She explained everything. And did you show it to the police? I will. And we'll run it in the paper with a full apology. Well, lucky me. Once again, Danielle Bucca the Great has crucified me, then plucked me off the cross with a pardon. You should have supervised the Spanish Inquisition. Look, I know this was all wrong. Unbelievably wrong, but if I can convince you of anything, just, just know that Becky committing suicide wasn't your fault. I know that. Are you all right? You haven't seen any more ghosts, have you? Would you please leave? I'll never be able to get a hold of the rest of the board tonight, so I'll see you at the hearing tomorrow morning. I'll bring the letter. Everything will be okay. All right? What are you waiting for me to say all right so you can feel better again? Matt, I understand. No, you don't understand. How can you possibly fucking understand what you and your overzealous crusade has done to me? Please just let me fix it. I have the power to do that. Well, you know what they say about power in the wrong hands, don't you? Do you think I wanted this? I didn't want to hurt you. Believe me. I know about feeling alone. It's no fun. I'm really sorry about what I did back there. I... Oh my God, you're all right. I'm so glad to see you. I thought you hated me. No, no. We'll call the police and we'll tell them you're okay. See if I got some painkillers, okay? Careful. Thanks. You know, I really appreciate what you're doing. I know you don't have to do this. Ah, it's no problem. What are psychologists for? You know, everybody has that infatuation thing with somebody at some point in their life. Yeah, it just happened to be me. Yeah, well, mine got way out of control. Thank God it didn't work. You know, I, I didn't really want to kill myself. I am so glad to hear you say that. People do some weird things in their lives. <laughs> I know. All right, uh, here we go. Now, this is all I got, okay? It's Demerol and codeine, so be very careful. Mind if I ask you something personal? No, go ahead. <laughs> um, did I encourage you somehow, or was it just because you heard about what happened in Antioch? What do you mean, Antioch? You didn't hear about that? Thought everybody had. No, what happened? Oh. Well, I went out one night and, uh, I met this girl, Denise, but she's not in any of my classes. I mean, she wasn't even in my department. So what was the matter? Faculty dating students is against the rules, but we thought we were in love, so... I mean, eventually we stopped dating. Because she was a student? Well, no, I mean... Because we really didn't get along. <laughs> so we broke up. There were no hard feelings. She started dating somebody else, and so did I. Another student? Um, not really. 
You see, she was going to be starting Antioch the following semester, and uh, she just came up to be with me. How old was she? Eighteen. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so about a month later, the school started getting these letters complaining about me that I was uh, taking advantage of my position as professor and seducing my students. <laughs> they investigated and they found out about Denise and as soon as she told them that uh, we had slept together, that was it. I was finished. So she turned you in? Not really. I mean, they got to her. They told her that if she told the truth that she wouldn't be expelled. So much for being the love of her life, huh? <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah. I mean, but I've learned, you know, what was that expect? She was just a kid, you know. If she just kept her mouth shut, <laughs> they wouldn't have any evidence, and I'd still be teaching her. What happened to the other girl? The one after Denise? Uh, she went away. Mm, that's too bad. Is it hot in here? I'm getting hot. <laughs> No. Well, you seem to like younger women. Why don't you go out with someone your own age? Well, you know, I'm not that much older than you or any other student. You see, when I graduated high school, I was 15. When I graduated college, I was 17. Yeah, when I got my PhD, I was 20. You know, it was just work, 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 all the time. If I was your age, would you go out with me? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, different time, different circumstances. Yeah, I'd like to get to know you, sure. At least we can be friends. Yes, we. Uh, You're a very nice boy. Uh... Yeah, under the circumstances, I don't see why not. <sighs> Damn. Hey, Matthew! Matthew! Good God! Dean Meyer, I can't believe this. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes... Oh, Jonathan, it's not what you Don't think, Don't you, really. Jonathan, me! No, Dean Meyer, you but don't... Dean, wait! Oh. You betrayed my trust, Matthew. As a matter of fact, you screwed me over. And yourself, too. After this, whatever happens to you, you deserve it. I've done it again. This is my fault. I'll, I'll tell them nothing was happening. I'll fix it. Right. Try convincing the board of that. I will. I promise I will. Madam Chairman, before discussing this issue any further, there has been a new incident relevant to this case. Professor Jarvis was seen undressed in the company of the same Becky Hansen early this morning at his apartment. I saw this myself. 
This is a privately funded institution. The impact financially of any kind of scandal like this cannot be estimated. The impact on parents, trustees, and alumni is incalculable. And uh, I would like to move that we bring this to an immediate vote. Are there any objections? Good then. Wait, 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 wait. Do I get to say anything? Well, only if you have something concrete to offer. We're not interested in hearsay. Danielle? All right, then. All those in favor of the permanent removal of Matthew Jarvis from the faculty of Bryant University, effective immediately, please indicate by raising your hand. I do feel sorry for you, because we were friends. But I gotta tell you, I've never been so... I've never felt so betrayed in my entire life. No, I feel sorry for you. You know, one of the first things you teach in psychology is to never let your emotions run away with your decision-making. From one friend to another, I think you missed that class. Do you think I enjoyed that in there? Yeah, it certainly looked like it. You brought this on yourself! I know what I saw. Our magician's really magical. Or do we just see them that way? You know, things aren't always the way they appear to be. Now, and by the way, when you finish signing the papers that are going to destroy my career, why don't you ask Danielle Bucca about the letter she got from Becky Hansen yesterday that she just so happened to forget about today? What do they call that in a court of law? Withholding evidence, I think? Make a great lawsuit. You can't be serious. Oh, I am dead serious. I hear these private universities have a shitload of money. We'll just have to see how much, friend. All right, Bill. Thank you. That was Bill Rojas, the editor-in-chief of the union. He says the paper never received your letter. But I put it in their mail slot. Wait a minute. Professor uh, Boca is the faculty advisor for the paper. She'd probably know if a letter came in. Professor Boca isn't in her office. Look, maybe it got lost somehow. What the hell does it matter? I'm here now telling you. <sighs> well, Miss Hanson... I don't know whether somebody put you up to this or what. All I know is, you've got your whole college career ahead of you. And that's what you should be focusing on. Not trying to protect Matthew Jarvis. I can't believe this. I mean, don't any of you care about the truth? Of course I do. Then why won't you listen to me? I was on the verge of committing suicide. And Professor Jarvis stayed up half the night talking me out of it. I fell asleep on his couch, for God's sakes. He really cared. And now you're going to throw him out because he helped me through the worst time of my life? I can't handle this. This is a very serious matter. Are you willing to, to swear to me that everything you've just told me is the truth? In my life. I swear to God. And you're willing to face permanent expulsion if I find out that you're lying? I'm not lying. All right, Miss Hanson. You're very persuasive. All right. I'll investigate. Again, thank you for coming in. Thank you.
She's not there. Oh. <clears throat> I, I saw her leave a few minutes ago. Fine, that's good. Uh, Manny, have you cleaned Professor Boca's office yet? An idea of why? Is there a problem? Well, there were some papers that uh, I left in there that uh, are important to me. I'm afraid she'll think they're trash and throw them away. I'd kind of like to check. Yeah, sure thing. There you go. Thank you, Manny. Yeah, sure. What are you doing here? This is invasion of privacy. I think you owe me an explanation. I think you owe me an explanation. Look, uh, I need to talk with you. I, I think maybe we can work this out. I, I'm down at the beach near Elephant Rock. Please come. I, I, I'll wait for you. Judging you? There is no more of that on this side. I can't keep coming back, Matt. Please stay with me. I can't. I'm scared. Of course you are. It's all right. I'll make it easy for you. Go ahead and go back to the rocks. Go ahead, Matt. Take it. 
It only takes a moment, Matt. It doesn't hurt at all, I promise. It's so quick. You can leave all of this pain behind. Freeze, please! Drop it! I said drop the gun! and leaving. I want my money now. What's going on? You killed that man. You murdered him. We murdered him. What are you talking about? He's dead. Matt Jarvis is dead. What? Everything was going just like you asked. Get the gun the whole bit. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this cop shows up and starts shooting. I didn't know what to do. I mean, Matt disappeared in this cave and I just ran away. Did the police see you? Yeah, I think they did. I mean, at first there was only one cop, and he was paying attention to Matt, because Matt had the gun, so I made it a little ways down the beach and hid. Later on, I saw an ambulance come, and they carried him out. How do you know he was dead? He had a sheet over him. It usually means you're dead, doesn't it? God, we have to think. I can't. Let's get you a drink. It'll calm you down. I don't want a drink! Well, I do! This whole thing is your fault. I told you it was going too far. Working on a novel using real people. I can't believe I agreed to do something like this. This is the way I always plot out my books. I'm telling you, nothing like this has ever happened before. Yeah, well, the way this whole thing turned out, it's almost like you planned on killing him using me. That's enough! Now, if I wanted him dead, why did I tell you to make sure that he didn't drown no matter what, huh? Now, we've got to think this through. I just want to get my money, and I want to get the hell out of here forever, okay? It's not that simple anymore, Tess. I think we should go to the police and tell them everything. No! What can they charge us with, really? I mean, if you think about it, we didn't do anything wrong. You were just acting out a scene. That's not against the law. We don't have to tell the police about the rest. But they'll be suspicious, Danielle. I ran away. That in itself is a crime. Tess, that's it. That's it. You're wrong. You're wrong. You didn't run away. Ivory did. Okay, so we don't have to go to the police. Maybe not. But we'd have to trust one another to keep this a secret. Followed me here. No, he didn't. <laughs> Just calm down. I want my money and I want to go. I can't deal with this anymore. Deal with what? He's alive. You haven't done anything wrong anymore. Come on, Danielle. I know you're wrong. Now you have. 
have to stay calm and keep your head. Just go to your room and stay quiet while I see what he wants, okay? Okay? Okay. And don't worry. They think I killed Dean Meyer. I'm fucking going insane. Matt, you're scaring no, me. No, don't be scared, okay? I didn't know where else to go. You gotta help me. What is that? It's don't gonna... shoot! I'm not gonna shoot you. Then just put the gun down. Here, take it. No, I don't want it. Just keep it away from me. Put it down. Okay. Calm down. Like it's like I was framed by a dead girl back there, a fucking ghost. This is insane. I gotta get out of here. Fucking insane. Why would anybody want to do this to me? What is this? Just get the money later. What is this? Huh? I thought you'd leave her alone after you were thrown out of Pontiac. But you had to stay with her, didn't you? You had to keep her until you killed her. Wait a minute, I didn't kill anybody. right in front of my eyes. And boy, you have. What are you talking about? Remember when I was pregnant? When I was 18? You never bothered to ask if it was a boy or a girl. I th thought wrong. It was your type that brought her into the world. And your type that took her out. <laughs> really makes you believe in predestiny. <laughs> Poor Ivory. She never had a chance in life. What are you saying? I didn't do anything to her. She killed herself. No, it was you. You got her pregnant. I begged her to come home. But she thought you'd marry her when you found out. She didn't tell me she was pregnant. You complicated her life to the point that she couldn't deal with it anymore. I kept calling her and calling her, but she'd hang up. So I wrote her these letters over and over and over. I told her that you'd leave as soon as you knew. Come home and abort the baby. Come home and abort the baby. But she wouldn't listen. <laughs> letters you know those were the only things that really upset her she got one the fucking day she died you figure it out she was a child no she wasn't she was 18 years old she was a little girl she was a little girl whose most recent life crisis revolved around the SAT scores you bastard I'm leaving. Oh, Matt. 
Did I forget to introduce you to Tess? I thought you two knew each other. Do that to me. I didn't know, okay? She said she was doing character studies, plotting out her, her new book. She said nobody would get hurt. Look, there weren't any bullets in that gun. <laughs> yeah, there were. I fired the gun when I was running away down the beach. Oh, my God. Just part of the plot. What was I, just an experiment to you? A psychology experiment. Nice irony, huh? Wait a minute. If you're alive, then who did they carry out from the beach? Ask her. Looks like she set us both up. What's he saying? I didn't want to kill Dean Meyer, but he figured too much out. You killed someone. I had no choice. I was protecting both of us. But it turned out so perfect. <laughs> See, he kills himself. Wonderful. It's a murder-suicide. He doesn't. The police finds the man shot dead. And the gun that did it is in poor Matt's hand with one bullet missing. And Matt had the perfect motive to kill him. Think about it. None of that could hurt you. Besides... I thought it'd give you that extra reality edge. I'm leaving. Don't bet on it. Darwin's law, sweetheart. I'm bigger than you. Not anymore. Stay or go? Stay or go? Should I stay or should I go? Please, I can't... Sit down! I said sit down there! And you too. You know, this is fun. Gives you a real rush. Did you guys feel it too? You just love playing God, don't you? Tonight I am God. <laughs> oh, I have to say, this has been more fun than writing any book. But we're not quite finished yet. There's one more chapter to do where we clean up any trails of evidence. Danielle, there doesn't need to be another murder. There doesn't need to be another murder. There needs to be two. Oh, God. Come on, Danielle. I won't say anything. Please. It's a shame, too. I really liked you. We could have been friends. But you're too unreliable. I could never trust you to keep quiet no matter how much money I gave you. It's too bad. But you've got that tragic flaw found in the best of the classics. You're a flake. Don't you think this is getting a little messy? Oh, no. Not at all. See, you showed up here in a rage to kill the witness who saw you murder Dean Meyer. I was in the bathroom. I heard the shot. So I snuck in behind you and hit you in the head with a champagne bottle. I'll do that after I shoot you. You dropped the gun. We both grabbed for it, but I got it first. And I plugged you. I had no choice. Do something! Sorry, but after what you did to me, tough shit. I called him up. He sounded like he needed some help. 
<laughs> you were gonna let her shoot me. Someplace people trust me, you know? Where are you going? Maybe I could transfer there. I'm just kidding. Matt, you're the first guy that's ever really understood me. Professor Jarvis. You had no idea she intended to kill anyone. No, like I said, I... you here. I wanted to talk to you before you left. I've never seen your face in the daylight before. It's kind. I know it probably won't mean much to you, but I wanted to tell you I'm sorry. Well, you look so much like her. Did I? Can't believe I was so fooled. I think you wanted to be. It was in your eyes. Oh, um, these were ivories. Daniel gave them to me to use before I started playing her. I guess Daniel did that. <laughs> I tried to erase it as best as I could. Anyway, I just thought you might want to have it. Things were so much simpler then. It didn't matter what anybody else said or thought. We had each other. So happy. People always think they know about other people. They don't. Until it's too late. 